I used to be one of those people who had the disease to please. I said yes many times when I knew I should have been saying no, and then I would be mad at myself for saying yes. Anybody ever done that? You say yes, then you're mad when they come back again. Because when you say yes, when you really mean no, people follow the intention of the yes. Because why do you say yes? You say yes because you don't want the person to be upset with you. They're not. You don't want the person to be angry. You want the person to think you're nice. They do. And that is why they keep coming back. I couldn't understand it. I just gave you some money. <laughs> and now you are back. Oh, that's because I didn't really state the truth. And so now you think me giving you the money meant I wanted to give you the money and that's why you're back asking me for some more. So. I tested this principle of intention when I first came to discover it in Gary Zukoff's book, Seed of the Soul. Uh, I was like, I'm gonna see if that intention thing will work for this disease to please, because people are always bothering me. <laughs> so this is what I learned through intention. Nothing is showing up in your life that you didn't order there. If it's there, it's there because you needed to see it. So. Uh, I have a big life and things show up for me in big ways. So one day Stevie Wonder calls me. I'm not name dropping. It's true. He'd call me. <laughs> no brag, just fact. It was Stevie. And he didn't call to say he loved me either. He was calling. He was calling because he wanted something, but that's okay. Um, and I, at the time, this was early on, you know, because when I first started making money and it was, you know, my salary or my earnings were published all over the place. I mean, the first year I was like, really? Did I make that much money? Oh my God. Um, it, it was very difficult for me to figure out where my boundaries were because I'd grown up poor and didn't have anything. So it's easy when you don't have anything and people ask you for money. They say, I need 500, you say, I don't have it because I'm just trying to get my rent paid. <laughs> it's harder when your multi-million dollar salary is now in the paper and you get a lot of friends and cousins you didn't have before. <laughs> so how do you set boundaries for yourself? I was having trouble setting boundaries myself for myself for even strangers, people would just show up at my door in Chicago and say, oh, bro, I left my husband, please help me. And I would, because she knows I have it. So don't try that now, though, okay? <laughs> don't try that now, I figured it out. So what I learned was is that Oh, the reason why people keep showing up is because my intention is to make them think that I'm such a nice person that you can ask me for anything, you can get me to do anything, I'm gonna say yes, I'm gonna say yes. So when Stevie called me this time, I thought I'd try out my first no on Stevie. Let's start big. <laughs> he wanted me to donate some money to a charity and I didn't wanna donate to the charity because I have my own charities and I care about a lot of people, but the, the, the problem is when you, you have money, everybody thinks you just want to give to everything. So every letter I ever get starts with, we know you love the children. <laughs> yes, I do love the children, but somebody else is going to have to help the children. So I said to Stevie, uh, I said to Stevie, no. And um, as a person who has that disease to please, I was waiting for him then to, to say, I will never speak to you again. I will never call you. I will never sing a song for you. <laughs> and he didn't. He just said, okay. Okay? Okay, it's okay? He said, okay, check you later. And what I learned from that is, Many times you will have angst and worry about things and put yourself in a state, like someone said this morning because their phone went off, they were mortified over a phone, I said, really? Um, you will put yourself in a state when the other person really isn't even thinking about you. So learning that I could specifically determine for myself 
what the boundaries were for me. What I wanted to do, give my money, give my time, give of my service to who I wanted to give it to when I did, that I get to make that decision. And just because you get 100 requests a week doesn't mean you have to try to fulfill all of that. Just because you have all of these demands on your time and on you doesn't mean that you have to say yes. You get to decide because you're the master of your fate the captain of your soul, as William Ernest Henley said in Invictus. And understanding that really changed the meaning of my life in that I was not no longer driven by what other people wanted me to do, but took charge of my own destiny, making choices based upon what do I feel is the next right move for me.